In 2005, the late film critic Roger Ebert brewed up something of a storm in a teacup by saying that video games can never be art. That's an interesting statement, isn't it? I mean, sure, you can easily dismiss that as an old man not liking a new thing, but having actually read what he had to say, it's pretty clear that for him, the whole thing wasn't much more than an intellectual exercise, a chance to play around with theory and definitions. Ebert's arguments operated on some very strange logic, but they were still fun to engage with. You see, Ebert's mistake was mostly semantic. He still thought of games in terms of what they were in their infancy. Electronic board games. He'd look at something like Metal Gear Solid 3 and all he'd see are snakes and ladders. A rigid set of rules with win and lose conditions. Maybe an aesthetic wrapper for presentation. You know, a game. And, of course, if you presented the man with a game that didn't fit that template, Ebert wouldn't even consider it one. It would just be a representation of a story, like a book or a film. To him, art is something you experience, not something you can win. Which is funny, because, yeah, that's what a lot of games are, my dude. It's an easy mistake to make, because the way we use the term now is so far removed from its original meaning that it has become a shorthand. A game isn't necessarily a game, it is a representation of a story. Something you can experience, but can't necessarily win. A game is just a word that we use to describe a subset of artistic works that we don't have more accurate terminology for, and we've never bothered to develop more accurate terminology because we're all just kind of used to the shorthand now. There's a shared understanding of what the term means that isn't necessarily literal. And I mean, even then, Ebert was working with a needlessly reductive and exclusionary definition of art, but you know what? The man was almost 70. He'd spent his entire life championing his favourite art form. I think he's allowed to not give too much of a shit about yours. The whole thing was so strangely blown out of proportion, which is where his response to the response comes in. In the later article titled, OK Kids Play On My Lawn, old man Ebert denied getting harassed over the statement, like how you might expect the usual suspects would react, but he did express some frustration with the amount of well-meaning chumps sending him screenshots from Shadow of the Colossus to try to convince him of the artistic merit of the medium, which I find very funny. But there's a particular line in Ebert's response that stood out to me. If I didn't admire a game, I would be told I played the wrong one. That's a strange one, isn't it? The kind of people invested enough in the idea that games are art to try to convince Ebert of their value would be willing to revoke the status of being art from any game that he wasn't sufficiently impressed by. The implication there is just wild to me. Of course, now it's the year of our Lord 2022, or I, I don't know, whatever year this video comes out. And the way we talk about games has come a long way, but this is a sentiment that has never quite gone away. Almost everyone with any amount of media literacy agrees that games are art now, but it would seem that some games are just more art than others. Why am I bringing this up? Well, because Ebert also said this. If you can go through every emotional journey available, doesn't that devalue each and every one of them? Art seeks to lead you to an inevitable conclusion, not a smorgasbord of choices. And, well, by that definition, Uncharted is the most art. Obviously. I bet at least some of you just winced a little bit. I want you to try to interrogate that feeling. Like, I don't think that all that many of you would say that Uncharted isn't art, and I don't think that many people really think that, not on an intellectual level anyway. But when you put it up against something like Shadow of the Colossus, or even The Last of Us, Uncharted probably wouldn't be your first choice to demonstrate the inherent artfulness of the medium. It's not particularly arty on the surface, not compared to games that go out of their way to project their status as high art, it doesn't engage with any particularly challenging ideas, it doesn't make the most of the interactive nature of games in its storytelling, it's comfy action schlock that obsessively emulates the stylistic trappings of old Indiana Jones films. And I'm going to have to drop the pretension there for a bit and admit that I really love the Uncharted series. They are video game comfort food built on top of some serious technical prowess. 
a showcase of craftsmanship from some of the most talented people in the industry and just about the only thing even remotely similar to Prince of Persia that's still alive and kicking. I will never shut up about Prince of Persia, no matter how many of the other kids made fun of me for it in middle school. But the lowbrow nature of it, the rigid video gaminess, and yeah, the mainstream appeal make it into something of a guilty pleasure. Something that feels inherently less worthy of my time, less worthy of being talked about, less worthy of having a whole series of videos dedicated to it. It's just a fun video game. Too much of a generic cover shooter, too much shallow eye candy, too hard and or too easy, too ludonarratively dissonant, too overrated to be real art. Now, I don't want to get into arguing the definition of art, I'm not Roger Ebert, but I do think there are a few characteristics that all art shares. I think that art is at least on some level capable of provoking an emotional reaction, or at the very least of inspiring conversation. And if you have ever dipped a toe in the rancid waters of video game discourse, the thing that you have probably realized right before your foot fell off is that the conversations inspired by games are both highly emotional and never-ending. And all that toxicity, it can sour one to even the idea of ever wanting to engage. All this exasperating cyclical discourse, this never-ending game of telephone that boils interesting ideas down to meaningless rhetoric. Topics like ludonarrative dissonance, difficulty, graphics versus gameplay or review scores. Topics that seem to crop up every now and then, only for a lot of people to get very angry and for the conversation to move nowhere before it gets buried and then exhumed a year or two later so that the whole thing can start all over again. I think all of this can distract some of us from the value these conversations can still have, and indeed the value of the games all this garbage gets whipped up around in the first place. Even if it sometimes seems like some of those games just aren't worth having to trudge through all that nonsense. Normally uh, these videos should end on some kind of a larger point, but I don't really uh, have one. The reasons I wanted to make are a bit more personal and have more to do with my own relationship to the series. I wanted to interrogate my shameless appreciation for them and to figure out what makes it so easy for me to overlook some of the very justified criticisms. Uh, these games, they're not exactly museum pieces. They wouldn't be my first choice for trying to convince a skeptic of the inherent value of games as an art form, but in spite of their numerous flaws, I still feel that they're worth my time. They're worth playing, they're worth talking about, and they're worth dedicating a whole video to. I guess sometimes I just need to remind myself that good things are good, even if they're popular. Even if liking them threatens to challenge my pretentious snobbery credentials. Also, could we as a community just get over Shadow of the Fucking Colossus? I know it's a classic and a masterpiece, but it's had its turn being the only game that is art. I'm sure we can find some other thing to spam aging film critics with in order to win imaginary arguments. Okay? Okay. Thank you for your patience. A special thanks to my $10 patrons. Howie, Harvard Krugerud, London Reject, Ruth Knappman, and Zach Strasberg. If you would like to join these fine people for some reason, you might find it somewhat reassuring that I never charge them unless I actually make something. Uh, also, if you've subscribed specifically because I promised to make that Disco Elysium video, I'm going to make it eventually, I promise. Uh, I've just hit something of a creative roadblock there. It's been out for a really long time, and I'm not actually sure that I can contribute anything to the conversation that hasn't been said before. It's fine, I'll figure something out. Anyway, uh, the series is done, it's over, I can put that part of my life behind me. Uh, I hope you liked it, and I'll see you next year.